Hi, I'm Sarah Fry. Welcome to Patent Pod. School climate is a key factor in social, emotional, and academic outcomes for students. But what about teachers? Today on Patent Pod, we'll learn more about school culture as it pertains to educational practitioners. In alignment with Pennsylvania's dedication to attracting, preparing, and retaining practitioners in education, particularly in special education, joining us today on Patent Pod is Principal L. Welcome. Thank you very much for allowing me to be here today. Oh, the pleasure is mine. Principal L, you've had such a storied career in education. Based on your experience, how would you describe the relationship between school culture, teacher retention, and student achievement? Mm, wow, that, that, that's a mouthful. <laughs> I but, did um, it though. <laughs> right, you sure did. Um, it, it, there, 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 is, there is no real student achievement if we don't find a way to develop strong relationships and connections with teachers so that they choose to stay in the field. And that, that connection those relationships may actually need to be developed before those teachers think about becoming teachers. So that may begin. So we, when we think about impact in students' lives, that may actually require us to begin conversations with high school and middle school students about the students' lives that they will be changing when they become teachers. And, um, and just encouraging them to, to choose this life. There, there's no more noble servant other than the soldier that's fighting in the war somewhere than the teacher who's walking into a struggling school and a struggling community and saving Private Ryan, you know, who you know, has every reason to go anywhere that they can choose any profession, but they walk into many of these schools and just say to a young person that you can be me because I was once you. And I think that that's a teacher who chooses impact over compliance. So when we talk about impact and student achievement, it's the teacher who says, I have high expectations, um, but I also am compassionate before I'm passionate. So I'm listening to you. I'm, I'm culturally responsive. I want to understand what you're going through, where you're from, what your needs are. Um, but that teacher then requires the leader like me to then now support them. To, um, to make sure that they have the proper training, professional development, but also that I'm also listening to them and understanding their needs the same way I want them to listen and understand to students. So I often say the best form of teacher retention is teacher recruitment. So if we can recruit strong, inspiring teachers, but provide the support to retain them, then we will always have a new group of teachers who come in who are inspired and not tired. Well, that is um, a priority for all of us, right? <laughs> not becoming tired, right. keeping up that energy, um, mm -hmm. not just when we're on for our students, but in all of our interactions and engagement in the school and the community. Um, and you, you've hinted at that, the role that you play as a leader, in, as, a, as a principal or mm -hmm. others in similar situations, whether it's at school or district leadership, what what is it about your role? What is it that you have to do or maybe choose to do to create that positive culture that promotes retention? Right. So the first thing I did was I chose to stay. So I'm in my mm -hmm. 35th year, you know, as a, as a teacher and principal, 22 as a principal, and I still go to bed every night with satisfaction and wake up every morning with determination. So, and I think that because I made that decision, that choice to stay, that there are others, even if they're struggling, they see that, well, the leader, you know, the person who's, who's you know, the captain of the ship is still there in the trenches, you know, in, in the fight. And they say, well, maybe I can go, maybe I can go a little, you know, a little longer. And I think that that's, um, that's a powerful statement. In the most challenging times, the bravest act is choosing to stay. And, um, and so by me making that decision, and, and my teachers know that, you know, I've, I've been offered you know, large sums of money to to leave and do other things, but it's just the work that's being done in our community and that the work that those teachers and other staff members are doing is so important for me that I know that my leadership is needed and my understanding of, 
of, of their plight. So what do I do? Um, I try to make sure that Teacher Appreciation Week is a year long. Mm. It can't happen just in May. So the start of the school year had a professional development day for teachers, no students. What did the teachers see when they drove up in the schoolyard? An omelet truck waiting to make handmade omelets for each teacher. Now it held my meeting up a little bit, but each teacher, and the omelet may have cost $10 per teacher, but that teacher felt like, wow, you know, you thought enough to, you know, number one, you, I didn't have to stop for food because you, you emailed me and said, don't stop for food today or coffee. I'm taking care of you today. I thought I was just coming in for, you know, a, a McDonald's sausage or something. But to come in and get, you know, an omelet, it just lets them know that they're special. I, you know, I, I wish I could give you a lot more. I mean, they, just, they deserve so much more. But the fact that I'm thinking about you and wanted you to feel special, those are the things that people remember. But I don't want the, the, the folks out there who believe that teachers don't need more money to say, oh, maybe we'll just buy them omelets every week. The supermarket doesn't want to hear that you're a teacher when you come in to pay that food bill. You need to pay the bill. So we need to find a way to make sure we're compensating teachers at a fair rate. But until we can do that, let's make sure that they're celebrated and not tolerated. And so I try to create a, a culture in my school where every person, doesn't matter if you're the janitor, if you're food service, bus driver, every person feels that they matter, feels that they matter and know that, that they are important. And that means we just invest, and not just investing presence, E-N-T-S, but also E-N-C-E, -E, the presence of being there. You know, I go in, you gotta use the restroom, I'll cover your class. You know, this age now, you know, teachers, you know, with the shortage, it's very difficult for them to get a break. So to know that the boss just came up to give me a break, that says a lot, you know, to them, is that, that I just, you don't just hear my testimony, you see my testimony you know, as well. And I think that's a great lesson for all leaders out there is that our job is about service. Leadership is about service. If you don't serve, you can't lead. When you become an administrator, you're adding to the ministry. And that's what I try to do every day. And um, I will continue to do that as long as I choose to stay. Now that rhyme, I didn't intend for it, but that did rhyme. Well, that even just the, the mental picture of, mm -hmm. you know, teachers that might be apprehensive or, or just still kind of coming back from summer break, feeling overwhelmed to, to be welcomed in such a way is uh, truly, truly a picture in the mind's eye. Um, and even like you said, doesn't cost anything to, to, right. to pop into a classroom and, and do some coverage. So it seems doesn't, like real that, tangible solutions there. Doesn't cost a dime to smile. Yeah. Doesn't cost a uh, penny to, to say hello, to say thank you. And sometimes it's just the smallest things that, that, that make a difference. So, you know, I'm still trying. I'm, you know, I'm not where I need to be and it's 22 years as a principal because I know I'm, I'm a learner. So I'm still learning. And as long as I'm learning, I know I can, I can get better. But there are teachers who've made sacrifices for me. So I need to make sure I'm making those same sacrifices for those teachers and students that, I, that I, I'm happy to see every day. You, you've hinted on this a little bit. You, you mentioned that the teacher appreciation is in a designated week of the year. Um, so forgive me, this is not a rhetorical question, Okay. but when should school principals and leaders prioritize retention? You know, you, we, we mentioned briefly about back to school and getting, mm -hmm. getting teachers inspired, mm -hmm. but when should they, when should teacher or leaders be considering retention? Every day, you know, yesterday. Um, because it's, um, I often tell people, you know, hiring teachers today is like the Hunger Games. Since January, February 2020, we've lost 600,000 net teachers in this profession, that teachers who won't return. Um, so we've got to find a way to, to, to begin to reach out to those, um, to those teachers who are in the profession, who are thinking about the profession. Um, but in terms of retention, just and, and protecting time. I think teachers have expressed this. When you want to retain folks, they have to know that that you appreciate their time. So this is for all you administrators out there. You just look right into the camera. Right, just right, preach. Right. right. <laughs> all you administrators out there, if there's a meeting plan and that meeting can be shorter, that meeting can be an email, that meeting can be a phone call, whatever you can do give that teacher the opportunity to spend some time working on themselves, 
taking care of themselves or maybe taking care of their family. Family is so important. And teachers who, who believe that their school is their family, they will choose to stay. Also create a learning culture and not a teaching culture in your school. Meaning teachers shouldn't feel isolated. They shouldn't feel compromised. Um, that they should feel supported. That they should feel like there's collaboration in the school. Those teachers will make that choice to be the year after year after year because it's very hard for them to think about being away from their family. So teacher retention is all about building a school culture where people feel that they can thrive and not just survive. And you'll see I, I like rhymes a little bit, but um, <laughs> but it's very important. So they you want to build a culture where teachers are knocking the door down to get in and knock it out. And you don't want them thinking, I can't hack it, so I'm going to grab my jacket. There's another rhyme for you. So Love it. Make, sure, <laughs> so, uh, make sure that we're focusing on uh, uh, that, it, I call it that empathetic you know, that leadership where we're really understanding and, and, and thinking about how they're feeling all the time so that we know, they know that they're important and they matter. So to close this off, you've already given several tangible real world examples and direct advice for leaders. But for a school leader that might be watching or listening to this and is truly inspired, but may feel a little apprehensive or self-conscious, like, oh, my teachers are, 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 are thinking that this might be a passing fad or, oh, mm -hmm. here's a wild idea, but does he really mean it? What advice might you have for those leaders who, who really do want to try harder for their teachers, but um, want, want to be sure that it comes off as genuine? Right. And there, and there are many of you out there. I know that there, there's so many of you who want to make a difference, you know, who, who want to choose that impact over compliance, as I stated earlier. Um, when you go into leadership, you have to be ready to be disrespected, not listened to, um, uh, called names. Uh, there, there are just so many things that will happen to you because you chose leadership. It's a path many won't choose because the price of leadership is conflict. You have to get beyond that and say, if there's one person that no matter what I do, I know that there will be one person who will appreciate what I'm doing. And so you go about doing your work and be as authentic as possible and be you. And those teachers, those, those employees who work for you and work with you, they will know your heart. They, it, it doesn't, they don't have to eat a whole pie to know it tastes good. When you come in there as a new person and you come ready to serve, they are going to know that you are there for them. And when you do, you'll see them responding and, 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 and working hard with those children, but also recognizing that they appreciate your leadership and how you understand where they are. You didn't forget because often teachers complain or administrators, they forget what it was like to be a teacher. But when they see you not afraid to wipe off tables and come and cover the classroom, you know, I still substitute teach at times, you know, because I want them to see me as, as a part. As, if it's a family, then we're interchangeable. But if you're new out there, lead with your heart and always let people know that you are there for them and they will see it and they will appreciate it and they and they will and they will stay. Wow. Well, you know, I we could go on forever and I'm but I'm worried that my rhyming dictionary, I <laughs> keep flipping through the pages. Uh, Principal L, it one, you are truly inspirational, choosing to stay at, in your roles as a school leader, going into classrooms and, and serving your, your staff, your faculty, and your students. So thank you for taking the time away from your school family to be with us today. We truly appreciate that. Thank you for your time and your rhymes. <laughs> um, we're very grateful. Yeah, and I, I appreciate, and, and you know, to close out, I'll just say, I, I, <laughs> I appreciate getting the nod of, uh, from the patent pod, you know, uh, it's, 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 it's an honor, uh, and, uh, and, a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and, and a blessing. And I often tell people, my goal is to be a blesser and not a stressor. And so you've given me an opportunity to share with your audience, um, some of the things I do on a daily basis to inspire children to choose Penn state over the state pen. And I'm going to end with that. 
That is hard to tell. <laughs> <laughs> I'd also like to thank uh, John Ragsdale for producing this episode. If you uh, are inspired by Principal L and are interested to find out more about Attract, Prepare, and Retain, maybe you're interested in joining Principal L in school leadership, you can find the link to the APR repository on our show notes, and we hope that you'll join us for a new episode of Patent Pod very soon. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.